This is the Roland TR6S drum machine. You've probably already seen it in a few of our videos. What makes this review special is that it is based on more than one year of extensive use. So let's talk about everything. The good, the bad and the things that should be improved. We'll point out some important details that might not be immediately clear from watching the initial hype reviews or from reading the manual. I bought this with my own money, so here's my unbiased and honest review. Hello everyone, this is... It's very compact and lightweight. The case is plastic, but it feels sturdy enough, so no complaints there. I'd say the general build quality is good, comparable to Beringer's RD8 or RD9. The value knob is a bit wobbly, maybe because it's a push encoder. The faders have a nice and smooth travel. The screen may be basic, but it's clear and legible. As you can see, connectivity is a bit sparse, but hey, bonus points for all the big connectors. Quarter-inch mainouts, 5-pin DIN MIDI and USB-B. The only way to sync the TR6S to other devices is via 5-pin DIN MIDI or MIDI over USB. An SD card is not included, but you can use one to load samples, update the firmware, as well as import or export patterns and kits. It's nice that you don't need software running on a computer or a USB connection to do that. Speaking of which, if you connect the TR6S to your computer, it's then available as a MIDI device that you can control from your DAW. Just send the MIDI notes to channel 10. But you can also use it as an audio interface that lets you stream the six individual mono tracks and the stereo main out with the effects straight into your DAW. This all sounds awesome until you actually try to incorporate the TS6S into an existing DAW workflow. If you just need the stereo master signal, then that's no problem. You can just go from the main outs directly into your audio interface. But if you want the individual tracks, then you need to switch drivers in your DAW. This means you can't keep using your regular audio interface. As soon as I switch to the TR6S, I lose my studio monitors and my audio inputs. And that makes this feature a lot less useful to me. You can also hear your computer's audio through the mini jack headphone out, which is on the other side, by the way. The TS6S can be powered via USB or four AA batteries. I wonder how long this thing can go on one set of batteries. Welcome to the void, little drum machine. To test your battery life, we will play Phil Collins' Take Me Home in an endless loop. Even the toughest drum machine is bound to break under these conditions. Seven hours later. It finally gave up after a total of seven hours and two minutes. Not bad. Not bad at all. Pretty impressive, actually. There are six tracks. The buttons may have labels like low tom or hand clap on them, but you can actually load any instrument in there you want. All sounds are generated digitally, either by ACB synthesis, FM synthesis, or sample playback. So, you could have a 606 kick, an FM snare, a weird sample, an 808 clap, and 909 hats or this interesting combo, which gives you the same drum sounds as the new Roland T8 that came out recently. Or maybe you got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. In that sense, these labels are a bit unpractical, because you're pretty likely to deviate from them. But you can assign colors to the fader LEDs, so you can color code your instruments for a better overview. In my opinion, the clear highlight of the TR6S are its ACB emulations. ACB is short for Analog Circuit Behavior, a fancy marketing term for we try to simulate digitally what goes on in the analog originals, including all those little imperfections. For example, if I put an 808 kick on these steps, then you'll notice that step 8 sounds a bit weaker or starved. As if step 7 already drained all the energy from the circuit and step 8 was like, Please, sir, may I have some more? But there isn't any soup left. Not for you, Step 8. 
Oh, the drama. Unlike samples, these synthesized ACB sounds give you control over an instrument's individual parameters. Tune and decay are always available here. And to edit the rest of the parameters, you need to go into the instrument setup menu. You can also assign one parameter to this control knob. When browsing sounds, you can recognize ACB instruments by the small letter P for preset. If there are any other letters beside it, it's not an ACB instrument. Holding Shift allows you to directly jump between the instrument categories. As you can see, this list is cluttered with all the factory and user samples. But luckily, there's a function called InstSearch that lets you browse only ACB or FM sounds. Very handy, just show me the good stuff. A huge part of Roland's drum machine history is in here. All instruments from the 808, 909, 606, 707 and 727. Some even with multiple variations. And also some weird but useful ones like an 808 finger snap, 808 noise toms, or a gated 808 cymbal. Even the third hi-hat sounds from the 808 and 606 are simulated. You get them by programming an open and a closed hat together on the same step. And if you're wondering how the hell you're supposed to fit a low, mid and high tom onto these six tracks and get anything else done, there are so-called full toms and congas in here that have a wider tuning range. You can put one of these on a single track and then parameter lock different pitches onto the steps. That of course won't let you play multiple toms at the same time, but at least you can get a lot more mileage out of a single track this way. I just wish the range extended a bit upwards. It doesn't quite cover the full original 808 high tom tuning range. Some instruments have a slash in their name. This means they have an alternate sound built into them. You can place this alternate sound by holding down the instrument button and pressing a step. Sadly, this only works on a few select instruments from the 707 and 727 but also on all FM instruments. Here the alternate sound is generally pitched higher with a pronounced pitch bend. I don't know why, but there's no ACB version of the CR78. In fact, there's not even one single CR78 sample in here. Roland, you make me sad. Speaking of which, I won't go too much into samples, because honestly to me that feature of the drum machine feels more like an afterthought. If you only want to use it as a one-shot sampler, you won't be disappointed. But don't expect any digitact style creative sample mangling. Here's the gist. Sample management is a bit tedious. You can't loop samples, you can't automate sample start and end points, and if you change the start and end points, this will change them globally, wherever the sample is used. And lastly, the samples are not streamed from the SD card. The TR6S copies the samples from the SD card onto its internal memory, after which the SD card is actually no longer needed. That internal memory is only about 50 megabytes. That's enough for a meager 5 minutes of CD quality stereo samples or 10 minutes in mono. Moving on to the FM based instruments. I really like those. They give you some additional flavors next to the classic ACB drum machine sounds. And you won't need an FM wizardry diploma, because most of these have just one simple morph parameter that seamlessly blends between two sounds. Although, with the recent firmware 1.5 update, Roland has added six new FM instruments. They all have model at the end of their name. These give you lots of parameters if you're into sound design. Menu diving aside, very nice. A set of six sounds and the effect settings can be saved as a kit. You can have 128 of those. That's plenty. Each of the six tracks can have an independent effect on them. You can choose from various filters and boosts, a transient shaper, compressor and various types of distortion. Most of these are very usable sound design tools. You'll hear more of them during the example patterns. Some effects have way too many parameters though. That's a menu diving fest and not really practical to use. Then on top of the whole kit, you can have one reverb and one delay as a send effect plus one master effect. These are most of the effects that are already available on the individual tracks, with some additions like another transient shaper, fuzz, bit crusher, phaser, flanger, a sideband filter, noise, and since firmware 1.5, also a fattener and a vinyl simulator. The master effect isn't a send effect though. 
which means every instrument goes into it at the same level. You can't have less distortion on the hi-hats, for example. LFOs on the TR6S are pretty limited. Each kit only has one single LFO, and that LFO is shared among the six instruments. While you can do different things with this LFO on each instrument by setting a different target parameter and depth, the LFO waveform and speed are set globally for the entire kit. Another downside to this is that the LFO can't actually be triggered by steps, it's always free running. So, let's listen to some more example patterns. Don't forget that there are also a few sprinkled across the rest of the review. Going back to Cali by LL Cool J. Helios Fan by Aphex Twin. Need You Tonight by In Excess. Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix. When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin. Paul Revere by Beastie Boys. We have 8 banks with 16 patterns each, so 128 patterns in total. Unlike most modern drum machines, the TS6S has no pages, and its patterns can only be 16 steps long. That might sound disappointing at first, but you have 8 variations in each pattern, which are basically sub-patterns. You can use these individually, or you can chain them together to form longer patterns of up to 128 steps. The order in which you press these doesn't matter, the chain always goes from left to right. An interesting concept, which allows you to loop and edit individual bars of a larger pattern. That's something I've always been missing from other machines. Live recording can be done in Instrac mode. Here you can use the six pads to play the instruments. And look, they even have the same colors as the track faders. Very nice detail. By holding shift and pressing a step, you can place weak beats. That's the opposite of an accent, allowing you to soften single steps of an instrument. If you press the bass drum and snare drum buttons together, you get to the accent track, where you can place global accents. In this mode, the tune control can be used to set the level of the global accent. By combining weak beats and accents, you can imitate the TR909's individual and total accent. It's a bit hidden, but you can also set the velocity for each step. 
80 is the default for regular steps, 50 for weak beats. I must say I'm a big fan of that system. You can quickly add dynamics with weak beats and global accents, and if you ever need more control, you can just go in and fine-tune the individual velocities. There's a dedicated sub-mode for entering sub-steps. You get divisions of 2, 3 and 4, as well as flams. Then you just place them on the sequencer. Sub-steps show up as yellow, flammed steps are violet. The flam spacing can be adjusted in the pattern settings. By the way, the sub button also works as a momentary switch. That can speed up the workflow quite a bit. Since firmware 1.5, the sequencer has probability features. For each step you can program a chance value from 0 to 100%, and the sequencer then rolls the dice each time to decide whether that step should be played or not. That's a feature many other drum machines also have, and it's great that Roland brought the TSXS up to speed. But they also added a feature that none of my other drum machines have, and that's substep probability. This raises the odds that a step is not just played as a regular step, but with substeps. Very useful. And on top of that, there's master probability. This is basically an offset value ranging from minus 100 to plus 100% that is added to all steps that have any probability programmed on them. Master probability makes their probabilities more or less likely. You can also use this for fills, if you give steps a probability of 0% and then increase the master probability. Swing goes from minus 128 to 127. That's a pretty wide range. On the extreme settings, the even and odd steps almost merge. Automation, or motion recording as Roland calls it, works a little differently from what you might be used to. Locking a parameter onto a step is like a switch. It changes the parameter value for all following steps until another parameter lock is found. You can still turn the knobs, but this value will be overwritten as soon as the next parameter lock comes along. You can automate whatever is on these three knobs, on the individual tracks or the effects. The master effects button can be automated as well. And do note that you can't have smooth transitions from one step to another. The parameters always change abruptly once they're recorded. The TR6S is a very complex little machine. The cheat sheet we made for it is even more comprehensive than our Digitact or Syntax cheat sheets. What will follow now is a very condensed segment of our favorite shortcuts. On the one hand, this will give you an idea of what's possible. On the other hand, you can re-watch and pause to use it as a reference. For everything else, you can check out the full cheat sheet on our Patreon. Make parameters change faster. Sweep erase the current track. Quickly change the colors of the entire kit. Assign a function to the control knob. Special attack. Hadouken. Quickly copy a variation. Show the current value of a knob without changing it. Choose a random instrument from the same category. Or for the entire kit. Variations can be seamlessly copied and then switched to. That's always handy when jamming or playing live. If you chain variations together, then this chain is saved with the pattern and will be active again once you return to the pattern. Very nice. There's inst play mode in which you can use steps 1 to 6 to trigger the instruments. The pad quality is good, although they're a bit too small for playing with two fingers. They're not pressure sensitive, but you can play weak beats by holding the shift button. 
Holding steps 7 or 8 allows you to perform 16th or 32nd note rolls. Press them together for 64th note rolls. Substeps and flams can also be performed here. With step loop, you can build little mini patterns or tiny fills out of your current pattern. The steps you press are highlighted and form their own sequence. There's no solo function, but you can mute tracks. Also, the fader action is quick enough that you can easily use those for muting tracks as well. During some operations, like saving a kit or clearing a pattern, there's an audible interruption in the sound. Not a deal breaker, but it is noticeable. These are the performance controls for the track that's currently selected. Tune, decay, and an assignable control knob. The assigned function can either be the same for every instrument, like pan, effects send levels, or LFO depth, but you can also assign individual parameters for each instrument. For example, on the snare it could control the snappy parameter, and on the hi-hat it could control the LFO depth. When no track is selected, we get the classic 808 colors on the pads, and these turn into the performance controls for the kit effects. Reverb level, delay level, and one assignable parameter of the master effect. There is no song mode, which means you have no way of saying, I want to play this pattern three times and this pattern once. A workaround would be to make three copies of the first pattern and then chain everything together. In contrast to variation chains though, where you can pick and mix single patterns, pattern chains are always a series of consecutive patterns. They have to be next to each other. By default, the fill-in trick button triggers the scatter effect. You can change the scatter depth, even while the effect is triggered, and you can choose between different scatter types in the pattern menu. Aside from triggering the scatter effect, you can also make this button launch one of the variations or one of the two fill-in slots. These are a bit hidden. You have to hold the TR rec button and turn the value knob to 1 or 2. Do note that we're editing the fill-in right now, but we'll only hear it when we trigger it via the fill-in trick button. There's also an auto fill-in function that keeps triggering the fill or scatter after a set amount of bars. You can also edit variations that are not currently playing, which is perfect for preparing patterns when playing live. Patterns can be instantly reloaded. So, you can mess with a pattern and just revert it when you're done. The same is possible for kits. Although there's no shortcut, you'll have to go into the menu. The performance controls can also be instantly reloaded from their last saved state. You can reload them either for the whole kit, a single instrument, or even just one single knob. A big workflow problem for me is that you can't copy effect settings. You can't even reset them to their default state after you've messed everything up. Let's say you've dialed in an effect you really like for the closed hat and now you want to bring it to the open hat or maybe even the whole kit. Then you have to do this manually for each track. I'm really missing a function that copies the effect settings from one track to another. Since there's only one effect slot for every instrument, even some basic tone shaping like a filter or a boost already blocks that slot. It would be really great if there was at least a multi-mode filter by default on every instrument. Sample instruments have this built-in filter, but the ACB and FM instruments don't. This one baffled me. You can't live record rolls. You can play them in inst play mode, but in inst rec mode, the roll buttons don't do anything. This seems like an easy fix to me. If you want to play a bassline with the kick, you can use the tune parameter to program melodies in a limited range. But these numbers are not very intuitive if you want specific note pitches. Samples have an additional coarse tune parameter, which works in semitones. 
why don't the ACB and FM instruments have that? The downside to cost tuning is that you have to map it to the control knob to automate it. So, the normal tune parameter sits there unused, while the cost tuning hogs the only assignable knob and its automation lane. Meh. You know what would be awesome? If you could assign colors to the variations, then you could color code them for intro, verse, chorus, or whatever. I'm really missing an eighth note tempo multiplier in the pattern options. I use that quite often on other machines. It's really nice though that the highlighted guide steps change according to the multiplier. While there is a utility function to swap two patterns or two kits around, it's not possible to swap the sequencing data of two tracks. That would be really useful when you switch to a different kit, but then you realize that one instrument is now on the wrong track. Happens surprisingly often. I'd love if the variation button also worked as a momentary switch. Let's say you're in TR rack mode and you want to switch to a different variation. You have to press variation, choose a variation, and then reactivate the mode you were in before. Wouldn't it be great if you could just hold the variation button, choose a variation, and be done with it? Good news! Since the last firmware update 1.5 was released, we couldn't find any bugs. Pretty impressive. There's even a screensaver mode. Whoa. The TR6S is currently available for about 400 euros or 400 US dollars. And that is actually more than what I paid for it over a year ago. Hooray for the global economy. To be honest, there is quite a bit of menu diving involved here, especially when adjusting the effects parameters. But that's the trade-off for this being so portable and compact. I think Roland actually did a very good job of condensing almost every TR8S feature into this. They now also offer this graphic editor. It gives you a better overview of all the parameters and makes everything more accessible. You even get undo and redo. To download it, you have to install the Roland Cloud app and sign up for a Roland account. It's all free, but personally, I'd very much prefer a simple download instead. I think Roland missed an opportunity with this one though. I really expected this to manage patterns and kits. You know, drag them around to sort them, or quickly import and export them as files. Unfortunately, that's not possible. A big drawback is that the TR6S has no micro-timing, so you can't make any unquantized beats. I think the option to use samples is a nice bonus, but definitely not the main attraction of this machine. But if you only want to use it as a one-shot sampler, you won't be disappointed. Sound-wise, it's a lot more flexible than the originals it emulates. The 606 instruments finally have some parameters, and you can even tune the cowbells, rim shots and claps. Add to that the FM engine, the performance features, the long battery life, and I'd say this is a pretty good package. The TR6S also made me realize how awesome faders on a drum machine are. More drum machines should have these. Just be absolutely sure that six tracks are enough for you. Just a quick reminder, you won't even be able to fit all of the 606's instruments on here. You'd need one more track to do that. As an alternative, you could take a look at its bigger sibling, the TR8S. That will give you 11 tracks, a better build quality, physical individual outputs, one velocity sensitive pad, and more direct controls with a bit less menu diving. But it's not nearly as tiny or portable as this one, and it doesn't run on batteries. And of course it's a lot more expensive. Speaking of portable, the pad LEDs are bright enough for when you're indoors, but outside during the day you'll have trouble even seeing these lights even on an overcast day and on maximum brightness. Keep that in mind if your plan is to make beats outdoors, or if you literally want to make this your desert island drum machine. A big shout out to everyone supporting us on Patreon. Thanks to you, we can keep making these videos. Leave your questions in the comments, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell. It really helps this channel a lot.